Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with Jensen. Hope you guys are doing really well. Got a little bit of a miniature haul for you guys today. I'm gonna be doing some first impressions on these two fragrances that I got in. The first one is from Ordo Parisi and it is Bergamasque. This is the second one that I have from the house. First one that I had is Taroni. It's been too long since I got one from this house. And then the other is from Guerlain. Ooh, look at that. Bois Mysterio. 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 Mysterious, mysterious wood. So we're gonna crack these open today. We're gonna give them a spray and see how they smell. So let's go ahead and jump into it and check these out. Now these I got from fragrancebuy.ca. I've got a link in the description to each one of these fragrances as well as the website. Pretty good prices on these. Didn't cost me all that much. And there's also a loyalty program on fragrancebuy.ca where you can like build up sprays and then use those for gift cards or 10% off coupons and stuff like that. So you can save a little extra cheddar. Fragrance Buy is uh, one of my favorite discounters at this point. I can tell you some of the ones that I used to use, don't use those anymore. So let's crack into these. Let's see how they are. We're gonna go with the Ordo Parisi first. So, Burger Mask going in. I realized that I opened these kind of like a savage. There we go. I can already smell the fragrance. It is coming through. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So, uh, I guess we'll take a look at the presentation here really quickly. On the front here, you have the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size, concentration. On the other side, the ingredients. On the back, you have a little information here. I'll read it for you. The parts of the body that carry more smell are those where more soul is collected. The strong smells have become unpleasant to us because the excess of soul is intolerable to the extent that our innate animalism is repressed and breaking from civilization. This project is my garden. I have planted, fertilized, cultivated, and harvested. Ordo Parisi states that our body is experienced like a garden and its smells are a true mirror of our soul. That's cool. Up at the top, you have a little infinity symbol. And on the bottom, your batch code, 09213. And these do open in quite a fascinating way, like so. Just kind of, just folds out like a flower or something. And here we have the bottle. You have the name of the house on the front, the size and concentration on the side, and the name of the fragrance on the back. On the bottom, you have that same infinity loop. And then the cap, it's a nice metallic cap. It slides very snugly into place, has a little design up on top. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and spray this one on. Yeah, that's a really interesting bergamot. So it's a really nice smelling bergamot, almost has a touch of like a bit of spiciness to it off the top here, like a, a sharp, a little quick hit of spice. Uh, not anything too too grating, not anything too aggressive. Maybe like a, a faint ginger, like a little little touch of it coming through. Yeah, maybe a little bit of that. And then like a sort of peppery something in there. There are no official notes on this, I don't think. Ordo Parisi is like Nasamato, it's the same uh, perfumer. And so they don't give no breakdowns. And this musky sort of undertone is present as well, but it's not really coming through as much. That bergamot with that, that sort of spiciness is coming through in the opening much more than any bit of muskiness is. Not really anything uh, overly animalic here at all. Coming across pretty easy to wear. It's maybe not as uh, overtly interesting as something like Taroni is, but the fragrance itself smells really good. This is quite pleasant, I like it. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Guerlain while this one hangs out on my skin. Let's open it up. much more sophisticated that time. So here we have the front of the box. You got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration. Nice 125 mil size on this. Guerlain uh, symbol up on top there. On the back, you have a little bit of information, including the ingredients. This unique and daring creation from Guerlain's perfumer is inspired by a deep oriental night. Adorned with touches of cedarwood, patchouli, and myrrh, this powerful fragrance unfolds in an all enveloping play of light and shadow. Then on the bottom, we have the batch code. It is 1G01. Let's go ahead and bust this bad boy out. So here we have the bottle, looks very nice. On the front here, you have the name of the fragrance, name of the house. You have a little ribbon that goes around the uh, collar of the bottle. On the bottom, a sticker with your badge code and on top of the cap, the Guerlain B. Let's go ahead, spray this one on. All right, here we go. 
Ooh, I can smell that right away. Yeah, that packs a punch. I'm glad I picked this up. This has a little bit of a, a green, green leafiness around the edges of the fragrance. It's not super prominent, but it's there. And you pick it up, especially kind of in the, like the after waft or the after smell. It's like you smell it. And then as the fragrance dissipates from your nose, you, you catch it along the edges, like tickling your nose hairs. That sounds really weird, but it's there in the opening. It also, also almost a, like a camphorousness to an extent that you pick up in the opening. And, and that actually hits you right when you smell it. So like a little bit of that and then kind of a woodiness underneath it. You've got this resinous sweetness to the fragrance, but it's not done in a syrupy way. So sometimes you'll smell something that's resinous or ambery and it'll come across almost like this syruped warmth and sweetness. But here it doesn't come across syrupy. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a little sweet, a little warm, not overdone. Got a really strong pop to it. It's got some good heft to it. It's projecting heavily. You can tell as soon as you spray this on that it's gonna be something that sticks around that lasts for a while. Because as soon as I sprayed that, as soon as it came out of the atomizer, you could smell it starting to fill up the room. Now it's got a bit of a sort of an incensiness coming out, a little bit of smokiness. That camphorous feel in the opening is, is dying away. It actually pretty much has has stepped back now at this point. It was more prominent in the initial opening. Now it's being replaced, kind of supplanted with this bit of smokiness and a kind of an earthy feel as well, but not overly dirty earth, just this, this groundedness, this earthy groundedness to the fragrance. That is really, really nice. I like that a lot. It's not gonna be for right now because we're kind of in the dog days of summer at the moment, but come toward the uh, the latter part of fall. Yeah, reach for that. Comes across unisex. I think my wife can pull this off. Maybe leans a little bit masculine. I mean, definitely if you were gonna say it leans one way or the other, you know, feminine or masculine, I'd say masculine, but overall still a, a unisex scent, I'd say. I'm glad I got that. That is, that's good, solid. Really, really pleased with that. Let's hop back over to Bergamask real quick and, and kind of see how that's evolved, how that's changed while I've been fawning over the Guerlain. It's still good. It does come across a lot sharper than the Guerlain, but of course it's a completely different fragrance. This is more spring and summertime. The Guerlain is more fall and winter time. When you go back to this and you smell it, it's like, oh man, it like, cuts your nose. The bergamot coming across pretty green, a little rindy as well. Got this kind of tartness to it, a little bit of a sour feel along with that that more typical freshness and, and bit of sweetness that you do get from bergamot. I would say that that sort of muskiness, if you want to call it, is, is giving it kind of a, a fuzzy, kind of staticky scent profile. So you get that bergamot, you get that citrus and that, that rindiness, a little bit of tartness there. And then it, it's kind of like it's all static, at least in your nose, like you're when you when you take the fragrance in, it has that sort of feel like a little bit of a cashmere type deal, like cashmere, but with uh, without a lot of the warmth that cashmere often has in a fragrance. It's, it's sort of like that. It is still really good, though. I think very wearable again, just like before the animalic feel that you might anticipate from the brand. You don't really get too much of that here, at least not yet. Maybe in the far dry down but uh, I don't anticipate it. Oof, that Guerlain is silky smooth. So there we go, guys. Some first impressions on these two fragrances. I'll probably review these at some point on my Extra Sense channel, so check that out if you want to. Uh, I do more reviews on that channel than on this one, and I concentrate on a lot of indie and niche stuff, as well as some designers that are maybe not quite as big. Of the two, I like the Guerlain a little bit more. Of the two, if I could only keep one, it would be this one, really nice. But I'm not disappointed in either. They both smell really nice and I'm gonna wear this one over the next few weeks a little bit. If you smelled either of these, let me know in the comments what you think about them. As always, thank you for hanging with me here today. Uh, again, links in the description for these. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.